All right, ABC, I'm Jamie. Welcome back. We're back with another video and back with some, well, some recent vinyl finds. Uh, this is over a period of time. And again, as I mentioned, with, like with my vinyl finds records, I, I don't have all of these records. I didn't purchase them all in one go. I tend to, you know, purchase, you know, a bunch of albums here and there. And then I want to listen to them all before I, I present them. So uh, this is from, a, you know, at least a, a period of time, shall we say. And I picked this up. Uh, I've been mainly, um, certainly through the lockdown, but uh, shopping online. But record stores are now starting to reopen again, which is nice. So a few of these are from online, uh, from record stores, and also from uh, thrift stores, which have now finally been able to uh, reopen uh, in the province of Ontario. So let's get to it. I won't spend too, too much time on each record. Uh, we've got Lee Michael. I love Lee Michaels. I just think he's a terrific artist, especially his early stuff was really kind of power, uh, uh, sorry, pop psych, if you will. And then he went kind of rock and funk, but just each album is absolutely terrific. So this is the album uh, Tailface. <laughs> there you go. It's uh, quite the, I guess it was cold at the photo shoot uh, that day, but uh, Lee Michaels always enjoy. And that's from 1974. I think that's one of his last, uh, one of his last albums. Okay, here is a bizarre bizarre record uh, that I picked up, but I just uh, couldn't say no. didn't pay too, too much for this. Uh, this is a movie soundtrack to a film called Come Together. I've never seen the movie, but it's described as an Italian-American movie. I don't know <laughs> much about what's going on, but I think from the cover, uh, you can tell, and from some of the uh, dialogue snippets from the movie, it sounds like, uh, yeah, not exactly <laughs> safe for work uh, material. Uh, so what's interesting uh, for this album, though, it's called Come Together. There's no Beatles music on it. Uh, the, there is the song Games People Play by Joe South, which is a great track. And then there's also uh, the Dells doing Love is Blue, I Can Sing a Rainbow. Those about the two very best tracks on it. The rest is either uh, movie dialogue snippets with some music in the background or a whole bunch of different versions of the song Love is Blue that has that cr sort of orchestral sound to it. So yeah, not not terrific. But uh, I will show you this. Uh, what's fascinating is that it's on the uh, APCO Films, which was the uh, record company for uh, Sam Cooke, uh, for uh, Rolling Stones, uh, early days. Uh, so it's on APCO co-films but it's an Apple Records release and still with the original sleeve uh, which is kind of cool and then uh, released on the Apple record label so a capital release uh, in North America it came out in 1971 I believe um, I'm, I'm certainly in no rush to see the film for sure Okay, uh, sort of an, uh, for me, obscure find, wasn't quite familiar with this artist. This is Ernestine Anderson and Hot Cargo. This is on Mercury. This is absolutely delightful. She's just a wonderful singer. And this is uh, with the Harold Arnold and his orchestra. And I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure what the Wacker series was. Uh, this uh, stamp on here that's uh, placed in a, a very odd spot. I don't know if that's original to this or not i have my doubts but uh, this was on the mercury label and she's just a terrific singer as i say i don't know too too much about this artist it was kind of a blind buy but uh, again on the uh, great mercury label but an absolute delight if you come across this pick this up it's just sultry kind of smoky jazz oh so good so so good Okay, how about The Animals? This is the album Ark, and this is from 1983. And this is one of two albums where the original band uh, reunited. Of course, Eric Burden, along with uh, Chaz Chandler. And it's definitely not The Animals of the 60s, you know, the great sort of R&B uh, sound of this. This was them in the 80s trying to be an 80s band. Uh, it's not a bad album. The good thing is that they're kind of trying to sound like uh, the Romantics or something like that. So it's not real, it's not 80s pop or 80s synth or anything like that. And Eric Burden's in fine form. Uh, the first track, Loose Change, is, is pretty decent. And uh, the single, Love Is For All Time, which apparently was supposed to be an Eric Burden solo song, but then with the reunion of the band for a couple of albums, um, was included on this, but it's not bad. I mean, it's not the animals of the 60s, but generally not too, too bad. And this was on the uh, IRS uh, label. And uh, I do love the, the IRS, uh, those plastic sleeves. Uh, and then there you go. 
Okay, and uh, an artist I'm absolutely fascinated with uh, because I, in terms of I've never had picked up a CD of this artist and really only discovered this artist kind of through the VC and through uh, picking up vinyl. Uh, this is the uh, debut album of David Bromberg and uh, there's a track written by uh, George Harrison on here and reportedly, uh, although not necessarily credited, uh, reportedly Bob Dylan uh, plays uh, harp on the song, uh, Sammy's song, but the album is dedicated to uh, Bob Dylan as well. I think that you can see sort of there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I really love his sound. He's just got a terrific, terrific, such a, you know, a multi-instrumentalist, such a variety of music that he does, and also bringing humor to his music as well. So a fascinating artist for sure. Okay, uh, for whatever reason, I have another uh, Rick Springfield album, a very nice cover, uh, Comic Book Heroes, and a pretty decent album. Um, you know, Rick Springfield, you're thinking, Jesse's Girl, Don't Talk to Strangers. His early stuff was kind of folk, kind of rock, um, and this was a pretty, pretty decent album. I actually quite, quite enjoyed this. Uh, the only thing is that, that this is clearly a... a slight um, or a later uh, reissue. This isn't a, a current uh, reissue, but the original was gatefold. So the original had this picture on the inside with more of the sort of comic books, like this is the song, I'm your Superman, and this is the song, The Liar. So the gatefold on the inside then had more comic book uh, art for the rest of the song. So unfortunately, uh, you don't get that with the uh, non-gatefold uh, release, the uh, cheaper release from 1973. Another great band, absolutely love Wishbone Ash, and this is uh, the album There's the Rub, and uh, Hypnosis cover, I do believe, yes. And uh, it's interesting with Wishbone Ash, with their name, you think they're, that they'd be more sort of folky or what, but man, great rock, great rock band, uh, Wishbone Ash. So another, another great album. And Ace. Uh, I was surprised how many Ace albums actually there are out there. Uh, generally, you only know Ace from the one song, How Long. Uh, this, I think, uh, was one of their last albums. This came out in 1977. Uh, Paul Carrick, who's almost unrecognizable there. Uh, again, a pretty decent album. Uh, no real, um, you know, no real big hits or anything like that, but another pretty decent album from, from Ace. Focus, love this Dutch uh, prog band. Uh, if I find any Focus albums, I tend to grab them. And it's interesting, I uh, saw Robert's on my turntable. He featured a, a couple of Focus albums he picked up. And it's interesting that apparently they went in a little bit more funk uh, later in their career. But their early stuff was great. Rock, prog, great musicianship. So this is a double album called uh, Focus 3. So their third album, but uh, it's, it's a double album. This is not Gatefold, and this is the uh, North American cover. And what's fascinating about this cover, as I said, unfortunately, it's not Gatefold or anything, but it's got like, it's kind of die cut, um, but there's no sort of insert or anything. Like it's definitely behind, there's really kind of nothing to see here, but it's a little bit thicker here, but it's actually, you can sort of see uh, and this is <laughs> just hanging on by a wing and a prayer there, that, this. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of gives you kind of a nice effect there. It's just a great album. Really enjoyed that. So from Focus, we go to the Archies. Didn't even know this album existed. It's amazing that the Archies have a few more albums than like you're thinking just the first or the second one. But uh, this is, I believe, their fourth one. Uh, they had one album after this one, and then it wasn't until... Uh, a number of years later, they actually came up with an Archie's Christmas album, but this is the Archie's Sunshine. No major hits off this one, but it's got that nice sunshine pop, for lack of a better term. There's some examples of some of the other albums. That's the first one. Uh, interesting, they don't have uh, the album Everything's Archie, which is the one that most people are familiar with, but uh, kind of a groovy cover, uh, the Archie's Sunshine. Uh, the Associations, another, I have uh, The Association on CD and I'm getting more Association on vinyl. This was one of their last albums, simply called uh, The Association. Again, uh, wonderful pop, wonderful harmonies, just with that element of, of psych uh, in there too. Uh, no big, big hits uh, off this one, but uh, really enjoyable. This one is a gatefold actually. And there we go. And on Warner Brothers. Anytime I pick up uh, John Mayle uh, is always a treat, and this is the album Memories, and uh, yeah, another great John Mayle album. Okay, and uh, if I pick, if I see any of the Lost Leader uh, albums from Warner, I always uh, pick them up, and sometimes they're always not necessarily they're not easy to recognize because they don't say you know Warner. 
Lost Leaders. Now, the Lost Leaders were uh, basically compilation albums from Warner, uh, released predominantly uh, through the 70s, late 60s and through the 70s, uh, that featured a number of the artists on Warner. These were things that you could mail away for. Now, in Canada, I don't recall ever seeing them, so I think uh, this was mainly a thing in the States. I'm not sure if in Canada you could actually mail away for these, uh, because they, they really had these quite inexpensively, and I always loved. So this one is called Middle of the Road, and as the title suggests, it's a lot more of their sort of easy listening artists. And I do love the, the, the uh, inserts that they would have for these, like the pages, and they kind of got away from this uh, through the uh, mid to late 70s. But uh, let's see who's on here again. Uh, you got Jesse Colin Young, Gordon Lightfoot, uh, a track from uh, Jennifer Warren's. On here also Dion, Rod McCune. Um, yeah, yeah, so really, really nice, some really nice stuff on there. And speaking of just kind of easy listening, uh, happy to pick up uh, Matthew's Southern Comfort. And this is later that same year. And as you can see from the uh, sticker that's actually on here, uh, that this does have the album Woodstock. Now, I think uh, the UK or the original version of this didn't have the song Woodstock. And it was, I think, included on here. But uh, yeah, uh, Ian, Ian Matthews, who was originally from Fairport Convention, then uh, Matthew Southern Comfort, and then later a solo career. But uh, really enjoyed this album. Finally, have a vinyl copy of Ultravox. I have the big CD box set, but never had the vinyl. And interesting, the CD box set looks like it should have the vinyl with it, but it doesn't. But of course, a great album, Vienna. On Chrysalis, Midjur, and the boys, Ultravox. Uh, it's not always easy to find Bob Marley or Peter Tosh albums, but uh, Peter Tosh equal rights. I loved Peter Tosh's voice. I just think he was absolutely terrific. So enjoying that equal rights. Uh, Southside Johnny and the Ashbury Dukes. Uh, usually you can find their albums pretty inexpensively. And boy, if you like Bruce Springsteen, you're going to like uh, Southside Johnny for sure. Always enjoyable. Picked this up at a local thrift store. Uh, this is kind of a family favorite. My, my dad used to have this album and, uh, you know, growing up with it and listening to it. And in terms of comedy records, I think this is one that just needs to be in everybody's collection because it's so, love Alan Sherman. Of course, you remember, Hello Mara, Hello Fada, but he has such a, just such a musicality uh, to his comedy. And it's all songs, it's all sort of takeoffs on either, you know, traditional songs or, you know, various types of things, but just a funny, funny album and uh, you can just the enthusiasm that just leaps and the the audience that he's playing for is obviously quite appreciative as well but it was nice to pick this up at a thrift store in really nice condition quite surprisingly because uh, sometimes comedy albums get awfully trashed but uh, yeah really really happy to pick that up and happy to pick up uh, some uh, Dean Martin how about Dino Latino, <laughs> there you go, Dean Martin. And this was on uh, in a Canadian press on the Spartan uh, label. So it's pretty much as the title suggests on uh, Reprise Records, but a uh, great cover, great cover. And uh, Gene Pitney, I couldn't pass this up. This was also at my neighborhood uh, thrift store, Value Village. Uh, Gene Pitney, only love can break a heart. And uh, fascinating with the cover on this one, it's actually a die cut. And I'm surprised at the thrift store uh, that it was still in nice condition and that this is an insert uh, in the record. So it's, this comes out and there you go. Nice hair, huh? Look at that and the <laughs> supposed autograph there, but it's good. So it's got the nice uh, insert. And what's also slightly odd about this is that uh, there's the track listing there, uh, but it doesn't quite match it on the record. All the songs are there, uh, but for, uh, for instance, uh, side one, uh, it says uh, True Love Runs Smooth, which is correct, but then the rest of the tracks from side one are actually the tracks on side two, and then uh, side two does start with uh, half uh, heaven, uh, half heartache, but then the rest of the tracks are side one. So it's obviously a bit of a labeling issue on that one. A great Ringo Starr album. I mean, you think about uh, the other uh, album uh, from this time period, simply called Ringo, but uh, boy, who isn't on this album? It's just amazing. Of course, uh, all the Beatles, 
Uh, with the exception of George, George does have a song on here, but I guess that George Harrison at the time when this came out uh, wasn't able to participate because he was busy with his solo album 33 and a third, but John Lennon's featured on here, Paul McCartney's featured on here, and of course uh, the who's who of musicians. You know, the list is almost too long to, to say, but a really uh, enjoyable album. Really enjoyable. Another sort of uh, uh, blind buy, uh, if you will, uh, Marjorie Anderson. This is simply called The Blues on the Spinorama label. I'm not sure exactly uh, the year that this came out, but uh, really, again, very jazzy uh, take on blues, but uh, absolutely enjoyable. But uh, the Spinorama label will have to... You don't often see a Spinorama record, so there you go. Oops, I don't know if you can see there. Sorry for the glare, but uh, there you go, Spinorama. There we go. <laughs> uh, a little bit of Frank. Uh, why not? This is Frank Sinatra, The Nearness of You. This is a Capital Pickwick series, so this would be like a budget uh, album. But pick this up for next to nothing. Still sounds good. Plays well. Okay, how about some Cliff Richard and Rock and Roll Juvenile? The last track, of course, a big hit. This was definitely a part of Cliff Richard's comeback. The last track is We Don't Talk Anymore. Uh, but what really shocked me is the song Carrie, uh, which was a sort of a minor hit, I believe, for Cliff Richard. But that song Carrie would later be covered by the Canadian band uh, Cano, uh, spelled C-A-N-O, which was kind of a, a, a French-English uh, progressive, uh, progressive rock band. Band, if you will not not heavy progressive but uh, the song Carrie uh, was covered by Cano and that's how I know the song Carrie from that band and I hadn't I hadn't even realized it was a Cliff Richard song of all things so there you go oh yeah a little bit more uh, Frank Sinatra we've got uh, hey no one cares classic cover another wonderful Frank Sinatra and again uh, in nice quality really happy with this Okay, a Burton Cummings I didn't uh, even know existed in terms of this album. Uh, this is Burton Cummings from the early 80s, 1984. Uh, not a bad album. Uh, the album Heart. You know, no real big hits off this. Uh, certainly Burton Cummings into the 80s was starting, you know, the hits were come, starting to come uh, fewer and far between for sure. But to the album Heart, didn't even know that one existed. And uh, another band I wasn't really familiar with, kind of a blind buy, very enjoyable, is the album uh, and group Baby Grand. And they had sort of a, an America sound uh, to them, but <laughs> you gotta love that cover. Baby Grand, and this uh, came out in 1977. Okay, and last but not least, I didn't have this on vinyl. Um, I've had it on CD and I, I had fair, uh, recently, not fairly recently, but uh, picked up when they did the big CD reissues uh, for a Crowded House. I didn't get all of their, the reissues for all of their albums. I got like the first three or four, uh, but this is, of course, their, their debut, uh, Crowded House, great album, World Where You Live, Don't Dream It's Over, Something So Strong. Really nice, but there's an extra track uh, that's not featured on the vinyl uh, album, uh, that's featured on the CD, which I wasn't familiar with, because I initially was familiar with the vinyl version of this, and it's uh, Carry On This Way, I believe is the track. I love that song. Really wish it was on the album, because it's actually now one of my favorite songs, uh, but it's only on the CD or the CD extended version of it, but... Uh, there you go, Crowded House. Okay, so those are some records I've picked up fairly recently. Hopefully everybody's doing okay and staying safe, and uh, we'll chat again. Take care. Bye-bye.